Good morning, everyone. My name is Anna Elisabetta Vaudano. I'm a medical doctor, I'm a neurologist, adult neurologist working in Italy at University of Modena Reggio Emilia. My duty today is to present in a very broad way and general way what epilepsy is. Epilepsy is a very high common disease. In 2019, the World Health Association, together with the International League Against Epilepsy and the International Bureau of Epilepsy, produced a document which is very important because it's the first time that epilepsy has been seen really where, um, as a public health imperative. This is because for many uh, situations and uh, many causes, uh, epilepsy is often neglected in public health agendas. Although, as I told you before, epilepsy is one of the most common neurological diseases affecting more than 50 million people of all ages around the world. Uh, epilepsy is uh, important for uh, its consequences. Indeed, the risk of premature death in people with epilepsy is much higher compared to people without epilepsy. And most of the people with epilepsy, or I mean, at least a part of the people with epilepsy can help psychiatric condition like depression or anxiety, and the seizure can make, of course, worse the quality of life. So according to this document, there is the important need to act now or at least as soon as possible to try to reduce the gap for the diagnosis and the treatment of epilepsy. So this slide summarizes the um, last uh, evidence about uh, prevalence and incidence of epilepsy around the world. And uh, here, uh, the prevalence of active epilepsy around the world is 6.38 over 1,000 persons. And uh, here, uh, the outliers, the outliers means people, uh, sorry, countries in which the prevalence of epilepsy is much higher than the other, uh, involve Cameroon, Panama, Ethiopia, and Ecuador. The lifetime prevalence of epilepsy is a little bit higher, 7.60 over 1,000 thousand person and again the outliers are Cameroon, Honduras and Panama and the incidence of epilepsy is 67.77 over 100,000 person and the outlier is the Ecuador. Um, here in the slide the prevalence of epilepsy has been um, stratified uh, according different variables like sex and ages and um, the uh, even type of epilepsy or even the social and econom economical income of the country. And uh, according to this paper, uh, the uh, prevalence is a little bit higher in male. Uh, the age of uh, uh, greatest um, prevalence are uh, young adult ages so between 10 and 30. Um, the low and the middle uh, income countries are uh, at greatest uh, risk of epilepsy compared to uh, high uh, level income countries and uh, active generalized epilepsy and I will show you later what generalized epilepsy means are much more frequent than partial and focal uh, than focal epilepsy. Mm. And this slide um, is something similar to what I said before, is a graphical presentation of prevalence of epilepsy over uh, 100,000 population uh, in both sexes. And again, here the colder uh, color corresponded to the lower prevalence, the hot color to the higher prevalence. And as you can see here, the uh, Mexico, uh, South America and Africa are the most uh, affected countries around the world. As far as the distribution of epilepsy in sex and over the lifespan, we can see here in this slide that male and female have almost the same prevalence of epilepsy, at least until the elderly age, when there is a um, difference between the two sexes uh, with the male more affecting than female. And uh, according to this graph, the uh, prevalence of epilepsy is higher during infancy uh, with a peak around 5 to 10 years old. Then it's going a little bit down but still remain quite high and then it's much much higher over the um, in elderly um, in both male and females starting from 65 years old 
over. Uh, this is because uh, many causes of epilepsy, as we can see later on, uh, are frequently in elderly people. So this explains why this kind of population is much more affected of this disease. So now we can go to the definition of epileptic seizure and epilepsy. Epileptic seizure is defined as a transient event characterized by uh, some sign or symptom due to the abnormal excessive or synchronous neuronal activity in the brain. So basically epilepsy seizure is something like an electrical shock. So there is some neurons, the neurons are the cell of the brain, which start to fire simultaneously, quindi in a synchronous way, where they shouldn't. And the sign and the symptoms of the epileptic seizure depend on the area where these abnormal cells come from. For example, if we have an epileptic seizure coming from the motor cortex, the sign of the seizure will be motor, like for example, movement of one hand or one arm and so on. This is because the abnormal cells, so the abnormal neuron, come from the motor cortex which of course control the movement of the body. Different is the definition of epileptic syndrome. Indeed, an epileptic syndrome is defined by the recurrency of spontaneous epileptic seizure. What means a spontaneous epileptic seizure, so unprovoked seizure? There are some situations like alcohol, sleep deprivation, which can cause epileptic seizure. In this case, the seizure has been triggered by something known, so in this case we have a provoked seizure, and the provoked seizure does not mean that the patient has epilepsy. To be epilepsy, the seizure must be spontaneously or unprovoked. Uh, there are some exceptions, of course. You can have a diagnosis of epilepsy when you have just one, only one seizure, so not the recurrence of epileptic seizure, but in situation when you are sure that the patient will gonna have a high risk or having further seizure, like for example, a seizure due to a um, abnormality, structural abnormality in the brain. In terms of classification of epileptic seizure, the uh, epileptic seizure according to the ILE International League Against Epilepsy Classification can be divided in focal, generalized or unknown. Unknown of course when you don't know exactly if are focal or generalized. Which is the difference? The focal epileptic seizure are defined by um, a specific point in the cortex where the abnormal activity of the neurons come from. So in the focal seizure, the physician know exactly by the semiology of the seizure, by the clinical semiology of the seizure or by the electroencephalogram, where the abnormal epileptic activity come from. The generalized seizure instead is a situation where the abnormal epileptic activity involves since the beginning both hemispheres. So it's impossible or it's very hard for the physician to find out a focus, so a trigger of the abnormal epileptic activity. We have to be aware that some focal seizure in that focal seizure in some situation can evolve to a generalized seizure. In this case, the ILE classification um, refer to focal to bilateral tonic clonic seizure, and there is the situation where the focal the seizure starts focally, so in a part of the brain, but due to the uh, high and intrinsic um, and the high and complex connectivity of the brain, the um, electrical shock spread over both hemispheres and then the focal seizure become a generalized seizure. Here I will going to show you very briefly some type of epileptic seizure. This is a typical focal epileptic seizure arising from the temporal lobe. The temporal lobe is a part of the brain and is a part where, for example, hippocampus and amygdala, amygdala take play, uh, are, are located. And uh, basically what happens in a temporal lobe seizure is the seizure start very focally in a mesial temporal structure. The patient says, can have some sensation, a uh, strange sensation like epigastric aurea or a cognitive, um, uh, cognitive and uh, sensation like deja vu. Then the epileptic discharge can spread on the other part of the brain thanks to the connection between the two mesial temporal structures and here the seizure can change and you can have some movements with both hands and you can have loss of consciousness. 
And then is the seizure spread again and involved in this kind of uh, uh, situation, both hemisphere, you can have a typical tonic-clonic seizure, which involve both sides of the body. Absent seizure is another type of seizure, is a generalized uh, epileptic seizure. And uh, typically uh, this uh, um, kind of seizure uh, appear like a, a um, suddenly a loss of contact by uh, the person who is affected by absent seizure. Uh, so the person, like in this picture, will stare blankly into space and be unresponsive for 10, 5 to 10 seconds and then recovery is immediate and the young person continues what they were doing so uh, the seizure might be unnoticed. Um, sometimes the people can, the person can be aware of having seizure, sometimes not. Um, and this kind of seizure appear very often during childhood and are typical of the pediatric and the childhood age um, and the uh, um, uh, are typical of uh, generalized epilepsy. Finally, this is the tonic-clonic seizure, uh, which is again a type of generalized uh, seizure. Uh, while, as I told you before, some focal seizure can evolve to a generalized seizure, so can appear as a tonic-clonic seizure. Uh, this kind of seizure is the most common uh, known by people outside the epilepsy field because are the one uh, with the, the majority of movements and the more terrified uh, seizure to be um, observed. And typically the person starts having some strange sensation, which is called aurea, and then there is a tonic part part of the, of the seizure um, and then some clonic, so some convulsion, uh, shaking all the body. And then after that the people usually have a postictal phase can be very long, even for minutes. As far as the cause of epilepsy, there are several conditions that can lead to epileptic seizure and epilepsy. Um, some epilepsies recognize a specific genetic mutation as um, the principal cause of epileptic disorder. Um, then the most common situation are the one where the structural MRI reveals some lesion in the brain uh, that can be the real cause of epilepsy. You can imagine, for example, a tumor or a stroke. And then there are some metabolic and immune and infection cause of epilepsy. Uh, the last one, for example, meningitis or encephalitis. Finally, as far as the diagnosis of epilepsy, as all the neurological disease, the most important part is the physical examination. So you start to interview the patients, understand the uh, semiology of seizure, because this is the most important part for physician for understanding the place in the brain where the seizure comes from. Then the uh, most common um, instrumental exams for people with epilepsy is EEG, so electroencephalogram, um, which is basically a recording of electrical activity uh, from the brain using some external electrodes. Um, usually um, people use some cap uh, which are completely in pain for the patients and can allow to recognize and record the electrical activity. And then there are some more advanced instruments like MAC, is a magnetoelectroencephalogram um, activity, which is usually done in um, for research purposes and in tertiary uh, epilepsy center. And then there is all the imaging stuff, which is basically starts from a CT scan. The CT scan can reveal a very big lesion in the brain, and they're usually done for uh, emergency purposes. The most common imaging has been done in people with epilepsy with MRI, uh, but you can even have some functional or metabolic uh, um, examination like PET and SPECT and even some uh, spectroscopy. Uh, both of them, PET and SPECT and spectroscopy, measure some uh, metabolic and uh, perfusional activity in the brain. Uh, we have to add to this uh, diagnosis the genetic assessment, which is becoming more and more important in the recent year, because as I told you before, some epilepsy can be really mm, linked to a genetic mutation. 
So this is the final slide, just to sum up what is the um, actual treatment for epilepsy. Most of the people um, assume some uh, anti-seizure medication to control their seizure. Um, a few kind, a, few, a, a, a small rate of person can undergo to surgery to remove the zone of the brain responsible <clears throat> for generating seizure. And finally, for people with drug-resistant epilepsy, uh, you can uh, use some advanced and uh, uh, complementary uh, therapy like vagus nerve stimulation of deep brain stimulation which um, aims to control seizure but um, usually are uh, really uh, performed only in a specific category of patients um, as you can understand even from this uh, part of the brain of the slide 30 percent of people with epilepsy uh, do not respond to anti-seizure medication it means that these people uh, starting to continuing to have seizure despite um, despite um uh, anti-epileptic drugs um and uh, from the document I showed you before, from the uh, World Health Organization document, there is um, there is the problem of a treatment gap because three quarter of people with epilepsy coming from low income country do not get the treatment uh, they need. So there is a problem of uh, uh, providing uh, antiepileptic drugs in this country, and uh, there is the need to um, a better distribution of anti seizure medication and reduce the cost of anti seizure medication medication for these countries. Um, so uh, thank you very much for listening. I hope this brief presentation is clear and you enjoy it. Um, these uh, are some references for, uh, uh, for you if you want to go more in detail of what uh, I have shown in this brief slide, uh, in this brief presentation. Thank you very much again.